happened now. It's so crazy what's happening in our world right now, but we want you to know that we have not forgotten about you, we miss you, and we wish we could hang out in person. But since we can't this week and next week, we're gonna hang out virtually. One of the ways that we're gonna do that is through this YouTube channel. We're gonna upload our sermon videos every week so that you can stay connected with our sermon series. The following video is Ryan's sermon from this week. Have you ever met someone who tells the best stories? They draw you in with every word, leave you hanging on every detail. Have you ever noticed that humans love stories? Think about it. We are so drawn to books like Harry Potter and movies like Star Wars or The Avengers. You learn through story, build relationship through story. And if you're honest, you want your story to be heard, even when it's scary. The truth is, you have a story, and it's worth being told. Jesus loved story too. He taught through stories called parables that people could relate to. Hearing stories that relate to yours is exciting because you and I are a part of the same story. Through his parables, Jesus draws you into not only your story and the story of others, but he draws you into his story. He draws you into the story that all people share. Jesus, the storyteller. What's up, Jen Now? Super good to be with you guys. We're gonna continue on in our series on the storyteller. But first, I have a question for you. Have you ever um, found yourself doing something that sounded a lot easier than it really is? For me, that thing is golf, okay? I can watch the TV and see a guy hit a tiny little golf ball super far, and in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I can do that. But then I get on a real life golf course and I can like barely hit the ball 25 yards. And not only that, but I end up throwing my back out because I've, I've whiffed the ball so many times. Oftentimes we find ourselves in situations where things are much more difficult than they sounded or appeared. Like skateboarding or baking or math. And you know what else is also a lot harder than it appears? is forgiveness. Yeah, in theory, I think forgiveness is something that we like. It's an idea that we can get behind. But when the rubber meets the road, when we've been hurt, when we've been wrong, when we feel disrespected, forgiveness gets really difficult. In fact, Jesus addresses this idea of forgiveness in a story, a parable found in Matthew chapter 18. One of Jesus' disciples, Peter, comes up to Jesus and he asks Jesus, how many times should I forgive someone? Seven times? Now, according to the Jewish law, seven times was actually going above and beyond what was normal. So Peter actually thought that he was doing really well. But Jesus responds and says, no, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Now, this is Jesus saying, hey, it doesn't matter how many times you need to forgive, just simply forgive. Jesus goes on to tell this story. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay, so his master ordered that he be sold along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, Please be patient with me and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him and he released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. 
They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man who, had, who he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. So we have this story about a guy who was forgiven a huge debt by his master. And as he goes out, he runs into one of his peers who also owes him a much smaller debt. And you would think that this guy would like totally extend forgiveness to him because of what he had just experienced. But instead he holds it over him and has him thrown into prison until the debt can be paid. Well, the story doesn't end too well for this servant. When the master finds out, he gets furious and sends the guy back into prison. Now Jesus ends this parable by saying, this is what my heavenly father will do if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. So what exactly does Jesus mean when he says this last part? Well, we have to remember that this is a parable. It's not a true story. And so we're not literally going to be tortured and thrown in jail if we forget to forgive. But think about it. The last time you had a grudge towards someone who hurt the most, you or the person you were holding the grudge against? You, because refusing to forgive is its own kind of punishment and torture. The person who hurt you just goes about life while you're still thinking and brewing over what they did to you. When you hold on to a grudge, you actually hurt and imprison yourself. So back to Peter's original question, Jesus, how many times am I to forgive? Is seven times enough? Nope. See, the point is, if we are keeping track, it means we haven't fully let go. We forgive it enough when we are finally free from those feelings of hurt and frustration. We forgive it enough when we are free. But that's not all. See, the point of the story is to, to shift our focus away from what people have done to us and towards the things that we've done. Things that God is so generously already forgiven. You see, sometimes it's hard to forgive others when we see ourselves as the good guy, but when our eyes are open to the things that we have done, it becomes easier to give other people a break. But when our eyes are open to all the ways that we aren't perfect either, giving others a break becomes a lot easier. And let's be clear, Jesus has forgiven us a lot. If he can forgive us for every sin that we've ever committed, then we can begin to pass that forgiveness on to others. Simply put, forgive as you've been forgiven. Now, as we think about this story that Jesus told, here are three thoughts for you. One, we can't forgive well until we fully realize and experience how much God has forgiven us in Jesus. Think about it for a second. Our pride that gets in the way of us loving others. Our judgmental spirit that cuts people down. The way we use words on social media or through our phones towards other people. Or our envy and jealousy that no one else can see on the outside, but it's brewing on the inside. Part of the good news is that Jesus died on the cross for those sins and so much more so that we could have a relationship with God. Because Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and God raising him to life again, God has completely forgiven us past, present, and future. Our slate is clean. We've been forgiven so much. And when we start to understand and experience that forgiveness, it's easier, it's easier for us to extend it to others. Number two, forgiveness isn't a one-time thing. Sometimes you are able to get over something quickly, like a simple, I forgive you is enough for you to move on. But oftentimes, things cut extra deep and the hurt goes beyond a one-time apology and the memory sticks with us. And it's these things that cause anger and hurt and resentment towards people. And those feelings are real and they probably won't go away after saying the magic phrase, I forgive you. Those words aren't magic. 
One time I was talking with a friend and he was telling me about a situation with a family member where he had experienced a lot of hurt and pain. And I remember he, he told me, Ryan, I, I've learned that forgiveness for me is not just a one-time thing, but that I have to forgive multiple times a day as the situation comes up. And that stuck with me. If a situation is still ca causing you to have feelings of anger and hurt, be persistent in forgiving that person as many times as it comes up to your mind. And three, forgiveness isn't easy. Like golf or baking or math, it's difficult, but it's worth it. And it's something that Jesus modeled for us. And not only did he model it for us, he commanded us to go and do likewise. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I know this form of communication is new and a little bit different, but our goal in this is so that you can stay connected with Jen Now's youth group, but more importantly, so that you can stay connected with God. So don't forget to subscribe and to watch these videos. But more importantly, we want you to know that we are available to you even though you're stuck at home. So if you need to reach out, if you need prayer, if you want to just talk, let us know. If you have our numbers, text us. If you don't, private messages on Instagram. We would love to talk to you, even though this time is kind of strange and a little uncertain for everybody. We love you guys, and we can't wait to talk more.